the Washington football team had their four game winning streak snapped by the Dallas Cowboys, but Washington is very much still in the wild card race. Do you feel like this team can turn it around? Uh, can they get healthy? Yeah. I mean, that. If there's any team that can complain and do some whining, now there's no whining in the football, but I mean, this team is injury ravaged and I thought Washington played really hard on Sunday. They were just out man, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then Taylor Heineke gets hurt during the game. You got Kyle Allen, you, you don't have JD McKissick and, and then Antonio Gibson gets benched because of fumbling. Right. I mean, it looked like a preseason game there at the <laughs> end and they're playing the Cowboys defense, which was hitting on all cylinders. Right. Uh, you know, Chase Young's done for the year. Montez Sweat, they're going to get back after mm -hmm. COVID. Uh, Landon Collins came back and made a difference. Right. They still have some playmakers, but just with all the injuries, their margin for error right. is just so thin that yeah. if anything goes wrong, like against Dallas, they fall behind 10 to nothing. They're not built for that. Their yeah. blueprint is three yards in a cloud of dust, keep the ball for a long time. And when you're down 10, 17, nothing, that just thrown out the window and that's not in this team's DNA. So can they get healthy and stick to the blueprint? If so, they're still a legitimate playoff football team. And you mentioned there Taylor Heineke, obviously he's get, undergoing an MRI. It would be huge to be able to get him back there. Pretty confident that he'll be able to Sounds play. like it, yeah. Yeah. But what is it about this Washington football team that is impressing you, especially during this like last five weeks? Yeah, and even yesterday you saw what they were trying to do. They have, the number one thing that sticks out to me is Ron Rivera has established an identity with this team. They know, even throughout all the injuries, and again, we I didn't even talk about Logan Thomas being gone, right. their number one red zone. Oh, and then Terry McLaurin goes out yesterday. Right. I mean, it was just nonstop. But they I mean, have, at one point, you're just like, gosh. Yeah, yep. You almost felt sorry for them. There's no, there's no sympathy in football. But Ron Rivera's got to be like, who next? And, uh, <laughs> at least I'm healthy, right? And, right. He overcame cancer, so there's how right. I worry about him. Yeah. But they have, like a lot of teams just have really good players uh -huh. and they try to piece it together. Washington has an identity, a DNA, a blueprint that will work in any weather or work on the road or work at home. If they can get some other guys healthy and make it to the playoffs, that kind of team will scare anybody because right. it's a team that if it's a close game, they can stay in the game, they can run the ball, move the chains, the clock just winds and, and that's their blueprint. Get a couple guys healthy. I don't think all is lost just because of yesterday's result. Right. I mean, and Heineke has shown before he's able to upset in the playoffs. <laughs> he's got a number one thing he has to do is not turn the ball over. He did that right. twice against Dallas and it cost put him behind the eight ball. And they're right as currently built right now with their health. They are not able to overcome no. multiple, you know, double, dig like that. double digit leads or just that's that's death for them. Right. OK, so I have good news and bad news regarding the Houston Texans. Shocked. I want the good news and then a double dose of good news. I want to see this trick. Okay, out. well, I'll start with the bad news. Okay. Um, they got blown out by the Seattle Seahawks. The they led. News. They had. A, they had a lead. The good news. <laughs> quarterback Davis Mills started. Yes. And passed for a career high 331 yeah. passing yards. So what did Davis Mills show you in that game? This is kind of what we called for last week. Yeah. Is that I know, the, maybe they listened to us or something. Well, that's scary. But the, <laughs> the Texans, as we've said, unfortunately, they're going nowhere fast this year. Right. Uh, they play the Jags this week in a, in basically the battle for the number two pick. Yeah. But what we needed to see, what we were begging to see is, if nothing else out of this last month, yeah. let's see what Davis Mills has. He's got something. He's got a really yeah. strong arm. He's He's got good pocket awareness. He manages the game pretty well. For a rookie, those are things you all look for. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of weapons, you know. Uh, he has zero running game. The worst zero, the worst running game in the NFL. So I think if you're leaning right now, is Davis Mills a yes or a no? I think he's leaning toward a yes, and but he's still got more to prove. But yeah, he did. He looked. He looked okay. He was the least of their problems against Seattle. Well, and it's good. I mean, now at least for the rest of the season. Watch Mills and say, okay, maybe Absolutely. this is our guy, or maybe this isn't our guy. Yep. But at least the Texans will have an idea. Yeah, they need, and they need to know that going into the draft next year. Is Davis Mills? Right. Is he our starter? Can he be maybe a backup? Is he a project, yeah. or is he a wasted draft pick? And Tyrod Taylor's our guy. They've got to have a definitive answer on that. If nothing else, the last four games. And I think yesterday Davis Mills made a case for I'm sticking around in some capacity. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so in that Seahawks Houston game. There was maybe more Seattle fans at the game than there were Texans fans. And of course, that's so hard to see. Yeah. But is there anything that the Texans can do to try to win their fan base back at this point? Or is it just this year? Not for this year. No. No. I, I mean, if I'm missing something, let me know. 
I think the excitement, the kind of the, the, the kickstart, the reboot for the Texans comes when, not if, but when they trade Deshaun Watson. Yeah, people will then, be excited about it again. That happens before the draft, happens in the offseason. You get multiple draft picks. Right. Uh, maybe Davis Mills is your quarterback. You start building stuff around. You, you draft a running back who can gain 10 yards a game, which they don't have right now on their roster. Right. Uh, you know, they need a lot of help in a lot of areas, but that – that's that's been like the dark cloud hanging over this franchise all year. Right. So you, you know you're two and eleven. You're going nowhere, and your best player it doesn't even show up. You're getting nothing out of him. It's just been a forgettable year. That's when it starts to turn around. When you figure out what to do with your number one asset, which is Deshaun Watson. Right. But the Atlanta Falcons, they came up with a season-high three takeaways. As soon as you count these guys out, yeah. they win a game and they're right back in it. Absolutely. So they win this weekend against the Panthers. What do you think the Falcons need to do in order to keep this going? They're still in this playoff race. Don't ask me. They're the hardest team in the NFL to figure out. They're so out. weird. I mean, they look so horrible some weeks. And right. You're like, this. they should bench Matt Ryan and yeah. put him out of his misery. The and the next week they get another pick six and Russell Gage yeah. comes back and Hayden Hurst found the end zone. You're like, yeah. they have some weapons. And now I'm flip flop. Hayden Hurst back is huge it, for them. Yeah, it yeah. really was because we talked about Kyle Pitts being a little bit underperforming. Right. Hayden Hurst just adds a little juice from the tight end spot that, that they haven't had. And Russell Gage looks like he's coming around and taking Calvin Ridley's spot finally. So yeah. they're not an elite team by any means, but I mean, they lose that game yesterday, they're out of it. Right. And, and, and they went on the road. And they went on the road <laughs> against their old nemesis, Cam Newton, who's yeah. just torched them over and over. And that was a season saving for now. It was a lifeline for their mm -hmm. season. They are not out of the NFC East at the bottom. I mean, almost everybody's in it except for the Lions. But right. I mean, right now, you the Falcons make the playoffs, you're like, 60% chance. Right, for sure. Well, let me, I'll, I'll let you know next week if they lose a clunker and we're, we're back burying them again. Yeah, okay, so they played the San Francisco 49ers this week. What do they need to fix, maybe alter, so that they can walk away with a, game, a win here? I mean, you look at this matchup and you're like, oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> as soon as we say that about the Falcons, they usually play one of their best games. But the 49ers have figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, they went through a lull there in the mid-year, but... Uh, they're running the ball again. Jimmy Garoppolo's not making any mistakes. They've got a tight end in George Kittle who's putting up giant wow. numbers. Kittle had a game of the century. Yeah. Uh, they, they win an overtime game in Cincinnati. They look like they're rounding in a playoff form. Mm -hmm. This is a huge, uh, a huge ask for the Falcons, who even on their best days, they're kind of – they need some smoke and mirrors to get a win like they did the pick six with Carolina. So uh, – you look at the game, you're like, they're not good. they're not beating San Francisco, but they 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 keep they, they won't go away. They keep they've got nine lives. They got seven losses and nine lives for the Falcons. <laughs>